Hello everybody and welcome to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels and it's the first Thursday of the month which means it's time for a guest vehicle review. But before we continue, if you wouldn't mind just liking the video and if you haven't already subscribing, that'd be really really good of you because it makes a big difference to all the YouTube thingy bobs. Anyway, moving on. For today, I'm going to need this. And I've found this. Isn't it beautiful? It is so cute. It is the smallest fire engine I think I have ever seen. And certainly it's the smallest fire engine I will have ever driven. Now this is a Ford A-Series. And it's one of the few fire engines that you could drive without a full HDV license. In fact, if you have what's called grandfather's rights here in the UK, that you got your driving license before the 1st of January 1997, you'd be able to drive this on your car license. If however, like me and Jeffers, you got your license after the 1st of Jan 1997, then you'd need to at least take your C1, which is for a seven and a half tonner, or like me, your full C for an HDV, which allows me to drive up to like 44 tons. Because this thing is gross weighted for just over six tons. And in fact, we took it on the Weybridge earlier and it weighs four and a bit with most of the kit on it. So too heavy for a three and a half ton on your standard license, but much more accessible for most people than your standard large lorry or fire engine based lorry, you know, standard fire engine, which are big. This isn't big. She was built in 1975, with the conversion process being undertaken by a company called G&T Attack, who were based down in Gravesend in Kent. Now, these were quite rare. In fact, any fire engine of this size was very rare to be used by the public fire brigades, mostly because there was no official documentation or specification from the Home Office saying what a light fire engine should actually be, consist of, what it should do. So almost all of these went straight into industrial service. But not this one. This is the first. It's the first one that rolled off the conversion production line and originally went off to Lancashire and it was part of their fire brigade. It was a demonstrator for them and it didn't last very long because they went, no, it's not for us. So from there, it was bought by the Central Electricity Generating Board who sent it down to Dungeness to the power plant there and it spent most of its working life down there. We don't actually know the exact date, but we know it was down there. And that's where it spent most of its life, until they presumably decided they wanted to buy something that looked like it could actually get rid of a fire. Because this doesn't look like it could. From Dungeness, it went on to Kemble Airfield, and that's where it spent the rest of its active career. It's worth pointing out that a lot of industrial fire engines like this, they were designed to deal with small fires and if a larger fire broke out they were there to kind of damage control stop the fire spreading until the larger appliances could turn up and actually deal with it because realistically this thing isn't going to handle a roaring blaze is it like a bonfire yeah good job sky high roaring inferno ah not so much also this is really heavy and i have no idea how the guys wear it for so long so that's so much better. For the rest of this, we're not wearing that. Of course, oh, I have no idea how these guys wear their helmets for so long. It's not even a fair trade-off to be able to drive the fire engine. When it finished its industrial life, it was bought for preservation, and the first owner did a massive restoration job on it as it had been worn down in its life of service. And it's now on its fifth owner. And the gentleman who owns it now bought it off a dealer who had taken it on when the previous owner died. And this was the gentleman who also owned my fire engine, Jupiter. And in fact, the present owner also owned my fire engine, Jupiter, and it's the gentleman that I bought it off. And with the money that I paid him for Jupiter, he bought this. So technically, my money bought this fire engine. So does that mean that I kind of bought a third fire engine. Under the bonnet we have the beating heart of this beast and it's Ford's own 3 litre V6, it's the Essex engine and it generates about 148 horsepower at 5000 rpm and it's this thing that's connected to a fairly grotty 5-speed gearbox which gives us our forward momentum. 
To be fair, it's a really small little engine. It's a tiny little engine bay. It's all rather cute. So for a machine that was built in 75, it's actually pretty tidy, especially if we compare it to a certain Dodge of 1986. It's weathered quite well. I mean, we do have to take into account this has been restored once. And in the photos, it looks superb. The paint's shiny. On a closer inspection, however, unfortunately, there's a couple of little bits of rust starting to bubble through here and here. And it's looking a bit nasty down on the foot, well, down, well, the step there. But it's nothing that's that serious. It's all stuff that could be dealt with relatively easier. Underneath, it looks pretty good as well. It's actually in remarkably good nick. And I really like the shape of it. I like how it looks. I think it's very cute and quite different. And the rest of this has all been done really well as well. I really like the way these lockers have worked. So if we push that, release the catch, it's spring loaded to start off with. And then looking whoop, all the way up, looking through there, it runs the whole width of the vehicle, meaning you can actually store decent length items of firefighting stuff, which is very useful to store firefighting stuff. And they're here. Ah, and more locker space. Ah, and this is the tank. So this holds 150 gallons of water. So not much, but enough to put out that bonfire. Good. And then this must be, ah, yes. In here, we have the hose reel. So these are the, the small hose reels that come off the back of it, not the main scale, but smaller ones. So that's quite useful. And obviously there should be um, something that clips onto this, uh, a nozzle of sorts, which of course I have on my fire engine. That's really cute. And there'll be another one of these on the other side, which brings us to what's back here under the big, oh wow, that was a really, really cool spotlight. I like the spotlight. There's a tire up there and the ladder which was meant to go on this one is currently the one that's on my fire engine. Oh, that looks familiar. That's a Godiva pump. What's interesting is you can see here where they've had to make smaller fittings to kind of comply with the smaller fire engine. But this is all, yeah, this is remarkably similar to mine. A bit different. The throttle control is here. And so if that controls your throttle when, you, when you've got the PTO engaged, and so you can work the throttle there, and then you've got all the gauges you need to know for how much your pump's working, the RPM of the engine. That's, that's a really tidy little setup, I like this. And then we have a gauge here, which shows us how much water we've got in the tank. And I know what you're thinking, are we going to fire up the pump? No, because it's poxy cold, and the owner doesn't particularly want us to at this time of year, because then we have to drain it again but we will come back in the future and have a play with fire engines and working the pumps and hoses, because that's cool. All in all, it, this is a remarkably cute, tidy and well-designed little fire engine, which has survived the test of time remarkably well. It's just, I think it's gorgeous. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, this is, this is nice. Let's go have a look and see what the inside is like. Does that kind of come to the same high standards as the outside? This is a lovely place to be inside. I love this kind of wooden style effect dash. I love the central speedo with this, the nice silver around it and the simplicity of the lack of any other information at all. I've got a temperature gauge and a fuel gauge and that's it. It's great. It's just, just really, really pretty and minimalist. The steering wheel, that's, that looks like it's come off a later vehicle, to be honest. It's plasticky and yeah, still minimalist, but I'm almost expecting like, I don't know, a wooden wheel for this. And then it's got these beautiful toggle switches here, which are very similar to the ones on my fire engine. And then some other useful buttons along here. So we've got the fogs, the wipers, the lights. And then my favorite buttons are the ones here, which are the blue flashing lights. Oh, that makes a noise. And of course, the siren. <laughs> which is amazingly loud. <laughs> and the seats, yeah, it's all quite comfortable. My seat's showing a bit of wear on it, but really this, you do feel quite special in this. It feels quite, well, it feels old, it feels vintage. And it's just everything that I want in a vehicle, in all fairness, it's just wonderful. And to be fair, most of this is done quite well. The, the headlining this is still pretty nice and the, uh, the sun visors still have got their shape. We took them out of the Dodge recently and they've just fallen away to nothing. 
it's really nice in here. It's quite tidy. There's a bit of wiring exposed here, which could probably do with a panel over it to really tidy it up. But really, this is nice. Oh, I love this, the, the door release mechanism and that it's all just, there's a bit of time and effort to make it feel special, which is probably what the van had to make the van feel special. And then it just wasn't taken out when they turned it into a fire engine. Because the back end, that's a bit more Spartan. Well, the back is not quite as nice as the front, and you can really tell that this is where the conversion process starts. You can see the frame that's being tacked on here and here, and the remains of what was a bulkhead here. In fact, I can just look over that and see the open road. Now, originally, it didn't have these seats. There was a bench seat in the back fitted on the bulkhead that run along here. The previous owner, however, removed the bulkhead because he wanted to be able to move this seat further back, the driver's seat, because he had long legs. So he's mucked around with it and got rid of the bulkhead. And then he installed two of these seats that he had lying around, one of which has now been taken out there to make more room for stuff, you know, storage stuff. And the only other thing that's noteworthy here is the transmission tunnel, which is the drive that goes up to the pump, the PTO drive, runs through here. They've got some equipment lockers here to hold uh, the fire extinguishing gear. That's about it. It's, it's, it's definitely nicer in the front. It's, it's not very nice back here. And it's kind of all shown by like, the quality of the handles over there. It's a kind of a pull, stiff pull latch, which kind of works rather than the nice handle. It, they are really kind of welds apart the front and the back. What are my first thoughts about this? I love it. Absolutely adore this. It's got all the things I like about a fire engine. It's big and it's red and it has blue lights on the roof. But also, it's so much smaller, it's so much nicer to drive. And it's got this lovely vintage feel to it. The steering wheel, the dash, everything feels a lot older, a lot more vintage and it's, it's just delightful. It really, really is. The suspension particularly is very, very soft. We're talking your grand's old car soft. To the point that I feel like if we were to try any manoeuvres at speed with this, it would go terribly, terribly wrong. With a little move of the wheel and we're already listing all over the place. It's uh, remarkably soft. Also for noise wise, there's a bit of sound you can hear from the transmission. But the engine's quite quiet, yes, again, especially compared to what I'm used to. This is quite a pleasant place to be. In fact, it's a very pleasant place to be. Now, uh, the brakes. We go that way. We go that way a lot when you put the brakes on. Whoa. <laughs> That's so bad I even stilled it. The, the brakes need balancing. It, it does rather career off in one direction. Let's see if we can restart this. Yes! Apart, the brakes are quite effective for old school brakes and we do slow down quite rapidly. It is, however, the, the way that it pulls it is rather alarming. Oh yeah, we've hit top gear and 35 of your miles an hour. You really do have to work this engine far, far more than I'm used to and think a lot more. It is a proper old school petrol V6. Ah. But that sounds starts being quite good. That's right, you work that gearbox lorry, you know what you're doing. I am a very professional driver, I just want to make that clear at this moment in time. The owner of this did say it is a pig to drive. And I don't think that's fair, I think it's lovely to drive, it just takes a certain amount of getting used to. And certainly compared to the vehicles that we're used to today, 
this is just miles away. Just such a different experience. Which is all part of the charm, I suppose, because it is just, it's great. The downsides, of course, the uh, wing mirrors, I've got one that's mounted on the bonnet and one on the wing, and they are useless. I have a very, very little visibility that way. And of course, I can't actually change that one over there because I can't even get Jeffrey to wind down the window and reach for it because it's mounted on the bonnet. So that's a problem. I think I'm getting the hang of this now. And I think I love it. I want one of these. Oh no. Oh yes. This thing is great. Has all the charm of a vintage fire engine because for no reason at all, it's just cut out on us. Why? I like vintage fire engines. They're reliable machines that you probably should buy one. Apparently it's too cold to have turned the, to have taken the choke in. It's very easy to flood this engine. Very, very easy indeed. Oh yeah, put the choke in now. Then it will recover. This engine has no torque. It's not very smooth. It might just be me not being used to it. Oh, there we go. We've, we've kind of got back to where she wants to be now. That's fine. It's back. She's got character, is this thing. That's what you call it. This is part of the joy of having an older vehicle, is this kind of having to work with it. There's definitely something loose in the crew compartment back there, isn't there? But yeah, kind of learning to live with a vehicle like this and learning to work with it, it's part of the joy of driving it. There's no fun with these modern vehicles where you just tell it to go and it goes. You want to have to kind of work at it and work with it and actually have a sense of satisfaction from the fact you've successfully shifted gear and it's still going and increasing speed. Like, to take this out on the road would be fun, but also quite an experience. And just driving it is quite an experience. <laughs> yeah. And definitely talking about the performance, the performance, it's got some, but it's probably about as nippy as the Peugeot 106 on a good day. It's not very nippy at all. And it is a lot of working a quite difficult gearbox to get any of that power out of it. <laughs> I do like it though. I really do like it. <laughs> it's great. It's very soft. Oh God. This thing responds a lot better to being driven hard. It doesn't like being driven gently. Like, you do want to give it a bit of welly and it responds so much more happily. Like, the power we've got now from actually giving it a bit of a thrash, it all feels a lot better. It comes alive when you actually get it out there and give it a, oh, this is fantastic. This is utterly, utterly fantastic. I mean, it kind of gives you a bit more faith that if you did want to go somewhere with it, if you were actually driving it in real conditions on the real road and out there, yeah, you'd probably get a lot more out of it. I feel like this definitely wants to go to a show. It's definitely a vehicle that you could take to a show and show off. I love that sound of that engine. Little three litre, oh, it's just, it sounds great. That said, 
it does all rather feel like a van. It feels like an old van. Because that's basically what it is. It is an old van. There's a gear there? Yes, there is. I've got this now. When we looked through the lockers earlier, we picked up and moved some stuff, and I can't help but feel that maybe we didn't put it back quite right. It is, when it's behaving, it's a remarkably pleasant thing to drive. It's really, really nice. And when it's not, well then it's just like any fixed vehicle, which is a pain in the backside. Let's choose second gear. Oh yeah, no, this is... I like this. So would I have this? Oh my God, yes. I love it. I think it looks pretty. I think it drives wonderfully. I like the fact it's somewhat temperamental and I have to kind of fight with it and work with it to get it to do what I want. It, it makes it a bit of a challenge. It makes it fun. I'd love the ride. I love the equipment and the way everything could be stacked and works together. This would be wonderful. But sadly, my two full-sized appliances will prevent me from buying something like this, which is sad. But this is something that would be quite good to have, really, because it's all the fun of having a fire engine without the massive stabling problems of having a fire engine. If you had a, a big garage, you could probably fit this in it. OK, so it might need to be quite a big garage, but certainly this is a lot easier to store than say Jupiter or Redruth which are quite difficult to find somewhere to store. And if you've fallen in love with this a little bit like I have I've got good news for you because it's for sale. The owner only wants £3,000 for it which to be fair I actually think it's quite a good deal that's an awfully good machine for that and there are some issues with it as we've kind of seen as we've looked at it. But if I had the money and the space, I'd have this. I certainly would. And if you're interested, in the description of the video, there's contact information so you can get in contact with me and get in contact with the owner and do some of that bartering stuff. So I hope it goes to a good home. I hope one of you buys it, because that'd be great. Then we could be fire engine buddies. That's going to be a new thing, fire engine buddies, I've decided. Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed this. And I hope I get the opportunity to take it out again maybe on a nicer day and just trundle around the countryside in it a bit more because it's it's what it's for really it's a nice trundling machine it's certainly not a rush to a fire at breakneck speed and kind of do fancy maneuvers it's just it's just not going to happen but for a nice trundle in an old fire engine this is lovely and you'll get some nice looks with it and it'll just be a genuinely lovely day out so yeah that's it from me this week and I'll see you next week for uh, another episode of What's Broken Now. So that'll be good. See you later, guys, and thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed watching about fire engines, how about watching this adventure here, where me and JM went off and picked up my Dodge G13? Or how about this video, where we try and fix my other fire engine, the Dennis RS130? It's all good viewing stuff. Fire engines. Yeah, reliably good fire engines.